the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Good morning. Today we celebrate the memorial of St. Joseph the Worker, so I will invite you to pray for all those who labor hardly, I mean hard, for their life living. And to start our celebration, let us ask for pardon and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do. To my fault, to my fault, to my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary of our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, creator of all things, who laid down the human race, the law of work, graciously grant that by the example of St. Joseph and under his patronage, we may complete the works you set us to do and attain the rewards you promise. Prava Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The apostles and the brothers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles too had accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers confronted him, saying, you entered the house of uncircumcised people and ate with them. Peter began and explained it to them step by step, saying, I was at prayer in the city of Joppa, when in a trance I had a vision, something resembling a large sheet coming down, lowered from the sky by its four corners, and it came to me. Looking in intently into it, I observed and saw the four-legged animals of the earth the wild beasts, the reptiles, and the birds of the sky. I also heard a voice say to me, Get up, Peter, slaughter, and eat. But I said, Certainly not, sir, because nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time a voice from heaven answered, What God has made clean you are not to call profane. This happened three times, and then everything was drawn up again into the sky. Just then, three men appeared at the house where they were, who had been sent to me from Caesarea. The Spirit told me to accompany them without discriminating. These six brothers also went with me, and we entered the man's house. He related to us how he had seen the angel standing in his house, saying, Send someone to Joppa and summon Peter, who is called Simon, who will speak words to you, by which you and all your household will be saved. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift he gave to us when we came to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to be able to hinder God? When they heard this, they stopped objecting and glorified God, saying, 
God has then granted life-saving repentance to the Gentiles also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. A thirst is my soul for the living God. A thirst is my soul for the living God. As the hind longs for the running waters, so my soul longs for you, O God. A thirst is my soul for God, the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? A thirst is my soul for the living God. Send forth your light and your fidelity. They shall lead me on and bring me to your holy mountain, to your dwelling place. A thirst is my soul for the living God. Then will I go to the altar of God, the God of my gladness and joy. Then will I give thanks upon the harp, O God, my God. A thirst is my soul for the living God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep and mine know me. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus came to his native place and taught the people in their synagogue. They were astonished and said, Where did this man get such wisdom and mighty deeds? Is he not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother named Mary and his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? Are not his sisters all with us? Where did this man get all this? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his native place and in his own house. And he did not work many mighty deeds there because of their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. It's pretty interesting that Matthew says in the Gospel, is he not the son of the carpenter? Is, Joseph is not even named. And you have to remember that uh, Joseph pretty much is an obscure figure in the Gospels, but is a pretty important figure. Because without his care and protection, probably Jesus and Mary wouldn't be there, right? And Joseph uh, invites us always to collaborate with God and do the work we have to do without complaining. And I guess we are pretty good in complaining about everything. You know, we complain if it's hot, and we complain if it's cold, right? So the question is, who can please us? Not even God, I guess. You know, think of it. And Joseph give us or puts in front of us the invitation of saying, will you be willing to collaborate not knowing what is going to happen? Will you be willing to do the will of God until it hurts and you don't get it? And that is not easy. And working in the life, you know, in life, uh, with the certainty that works, that God works with us, then we have the opportunity of doing everything we do, knowing that God will bring it to fulfillment, to completion. But the question remains, when we are doing what we do in life, why are we doing it? Okay? Because today I was inviting you to work for those who have to really work hard for a life. And we, in our time, in our society, gorge ourselves saying, I'm pretty busy. I'm too busy to do anything. I'm too busy even for God. And the issue is, are we 
living to work or working for a living. Because if we have no time to rest, first of all, and then to connect with God, how can we understand the God who created us? And mind you, the Genesis tells us that God worked and then he rested. That means there is a balance. And we want to work and work and work and work to achieve what we want because we want it. And not only the material things, okay? We work for a house, for the car, for whatever. But when you are coming to church, when you are doing acts of charity, when you are doing your personal devotions, why are you doing them? To earn heaven or to develop a relationship with God? You know, it's pretty interesting because we say, I put so much time on it, I do it, so I deserve. I mean, just think about Joseph. He, yes, the gospel will tell us, was ready to say, I don't want business of this. But when he's attentive to the invitation of God, he says, I am in. I don't, I don't know what is going to come, but I will collaborate. He participates with the plan of God. So I guess that today we could ask God, you know, that he may give us the faith and the hope of Joseph. Okay? And that we may be able to say, okay, how can we help each other to have what we need, yes, for a decent life, but also for a life which will help us to grow in the, love, the life of God. And in a special way, I will ask you to pray for those who have not the means for a decent life. But I will tell you what I said the other day uh, in a retreat. I was preaching a retreat, and I was telling these people, you know, we are pretty quick in identifying with the poor, the hardworking people, okay? Now, just because I like to always, you know, challenge a little bit more, <laughs> think about it. Don't be that quick in identifying yourself with the poor. Rather, think of the many times you have people coming to your house and do work for you. How do you treat them? How do you relate to them? Are you recognizing the dignity of these people? So it's not that easy just to say, I am good. So let us ask the Lord to give us really the desire to respect the dignity of everybody, to help everyone we met to grow in a good life, but also in a deeper relationship with him. Please all rise. And let us offer to God our petitions and our needs. For the church in her role of shepherd, may the Holy Spirit continue to fill her with every grace and blessing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all nations and peoples, may the Lord bring them leaders who will honor the right of religious freedom for all those they govern. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those suffering from anxiety or mental anguish, May they experience the peace of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. For all in this community who need healing or reconciliation, 
May the mercy and forgiveness of Jesus be theirs. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who have died in the company of the Good Shepherd, may they enjoy eternal life with him in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, holy marriage, permanent diaconate, and single life, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those in public office, that they may be inspired by the Holy Spirit to serve and protect all life from conception to natural death, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For all, all those remembered in our prayer petition thank you book, that through God's everlasting love, they will receive the help they need, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the intention of Mary Therese Swart, Berta, and Willie Dobner, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God, Father of mercies, hear these our prayers and those that we have kept in our hearts, grant them according to your will. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for to you with goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us a bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for to you with goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, fount of all mercy, look upon our offerings, which we bring before your majesty in commemoration of Saint Joseph, and mercifully grant that the gifts we offer may become the means of protection for those who call upon you, to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. And on the commemoration of Saint Joseph, we give you fitting praise to glorify you and bless you. For this just man was given by you as exposed by the Virgin Mother of God and set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household to watch like a father over your only begotten son who was conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. To him, the angels praise your majesty dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like a dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willing into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. 
for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be put out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim you there, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Jerome, our Bishop, all the clergy, and all of your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, gracious and grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who say to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold he who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. 
but only say the word and my soul shall be.
Let us pray. Having fed upon heavenly delights, we humbly ask you, Lord, that by St. Joseph's example, cherishing in our hearts the signs of your love, we may ever enjoy the fruit of perpetual peace. To Christ our Lord. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And O thou, Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who run about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Enjoy the spring.